our crew has arrived on Rufus Woods Reservoir, and we're launching at the Colville Tribal Net Pen Site at the Middle Net Pens on Rufus Woods. Good morning, Austin. Good to see you again. What are we up to today? All right, so we're gonna go down here. We're on Rufus Woods Reservoir, and uh, we're gonna go out and do some jig fishing for some walleye and see if we can uh, put some of these big fish in the boat and, uh, and get some uh, meat for the table for you guys, so. Now, this is one of your favorite places in the winter. I know you do a lot of fishing for the Big Kokanee on Lake Roosevelt, just above here, but Rufus Woods is one of the places that you like to fish for walleye, particularly in the early winter into spring. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I like fishing walleye in this area in the pre-spawn when they're staging up and getting ready to uh, spawn. So they're kind of congregated and we can kind of get on top of them and, and have some great days catching some really nice fish. There's a lot of big fish in this system and we let go a lot of the really big ones. It's just fun to, to pull on those big fish, get a really cool photo of these big hens and let them go. And we're trying to kill those fish that are in that, you know, most of them are in that 18 to 21 inch range, which is, as you know, is a great size for table fare. And these things got shoulders on them. They're great fish, and uh, we catch a lot of fish in that 24 to 28 inch range as well, but we let them ones go, so. <laughs> That's exactly fun. right. Like uh, last time we were out, we released four or five fish that were in that 24 to 28 inch range. And I do appreciate the fact that those guys are going back in the system, making babies. So there's lots of fish available to us when we come out again. So good, I'm looking forward to this day here on Rufus Woods with my buddy, Austin Mosier. Here we go, let's go get them. Hey, hey you got one. Yeah. Looks like a little male, that's kind of what we're looking for. All right, that's perfect. That's actually a pretty small male, really, for, for this area. Good job. That'll be a good one. Oh, good, sorry. Nice work. I'm just wondering how Moses Lake wall I got into this place, or <laughs> I should say a Lake Roosevelt wall I got into <laughs> Rufus Woods. Hey, you said I caught the smallest fish last time. Well, I think it was about <laughs> this size, so. It was about that size. Hey, but that was the first fish last yeah, time too, so yeah, there's pretty. more and bigger on the way. Here we go. We got into them. Well, Austin, you've got this jig fishing down to a science. Let's show people how you actually rig your jigs. Yeah, so we, uh, th there's a lot of different presentations that I use. This is one of them. This is a, this is a Gary Yamamoto Super Grub. It's a five inch Super Grub. It's a great, great little swim bait. It's gonna work really well uh, in, in a situation where there's crawdads in the area. So I just rig them like this. I like to run a stinger hook on mine and I'll run it down like this and I tie it up like that. Then I have a stinger hook that I've tied up right here with just a snell knot and then I tie directly to the eye underneath the main line. Then I take that and I run it through the plastic down around the tail and I pull it back out. Just thread that line through there. That's going to help to keep that kind of in line with the back of the jig. So when they come up to bite that fluttering tail, they're going to get the hook. Terrific. All right. Thanks. Yep. Go. I got one. Yeah, yeah. All right, Austin. Hey. What a show off. You know, he stands here in the back of the boat and barks orders at us, and then he catches all the fish, you know? Come on. Yeah. That's the first one for me. <laughs> no, we got a pretty nice fish. Uh, you know, it's our current's a little slow, and slow current makes for a little bit tougher fishing. We have a little bit of current, so it's working, um, but we started out just a little bit slow, but uh, we got a nice one here, and I'm going to show this fish to you guys here in just a minute. See how good he cooked. I might be able to just lip him. Sure? Yeah, maybe. He looks like he's pretty cooked right through the jaw. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, nice fish. 
That'll That's work for... more like uh, you're used to getting up here, isn't it? Yeah, look at the shoulders on those fish. That's a real nice fish. That's going to be in that 19 to 21 and a half inch range. That's a great fish. It's going to be a great eater. And uh, I tell you what, he wasn't coming off. He's got the jig through the face and the stinger hook. So oh, nice job, Austin. We got him. You know, these Columbia River fish, too, they've just got this gorgeous color to them. Yeah. Very impressive fish. Yeah, they're really neat. I think they look cool with these little white tips on their fins. Yeah. It's kind of a neat deal as they're camouflaging. But uh, these look a lot different than the ones like on Banks Lake. Those ones are a little more washed out. These ones have a lot more camo on them. So yeah. Pre pretty cool fish, and I'm happy to have them. It's going to make a great eater. Woo! Yeah. Ah, <laughs> good job, Austin. <laughs> All right. That's going to work. I love it. I love doubles. We might have to put them both in the same net. We'll see. Oh, there's one. That's a nice eater right there. Good job. This is a good fish. Yeah. All right, Nick. Good job. That's why we carry two nets, Dave. Isn't that the deal? Yeah. Two nets in case we get a double. Those stinger hooks make them hard to get out of a net real quick, too. Yeah. yeah. I like to have two nets. Cool. Well, great eaters. We're on top of some fish. So, we got another one here, same kind of deal, but look at that jig, he just inhaled that thing. And oh. you don't always need a stinger hook, as you can see right there, it's hanging out of his mouth, but he swallowed that hook so deep that it didn't really matter. And uh, sure is nice to get doubles, and, and we're on them, we got a couple nice males here, and good job, man, nice work. All right, Thank boys, you. let's whack him and stack him. <laughs>
Am I under you? Yep. Yeah, I'm under you. I tell you what, that one, it really was a pronounced bite. It wasn't just weight. A lot of times they're just weight. But this one was a total tick. It felt like someone tapped my rod like that. And uh, when you feel that, mm -hmm. it takes your brain just a split second to realize what it was and then wham, nail them. And uh, here he is. Your little fish. Oh, tricky. He must have felt heavy. He did. He did. Yeah, I, I mean, it you had a, a good bend in your rod. Yeah, and so yeah. this fish is, he's hooked right on the gill plate. And we get a lot of fish hooked in the chin right here. Uh -huh. And I feel like, you know, part of the reason why that is, is there might be a whole bunch of other walleye around down there. And he's trying to hide this from the one that's next to him so that he can eat it. I think uh -huh. they try to hold him down and then get their body in a position so that they can eat it and the guy next to him is not going to get it. So, <laughs> uh, we get a lot of them in the chin. Um, and uh, so, yep, good little presentation. It nice works. Little fish. Oh, it's a wily one. Good catch. Oh, ah, ah, good Fish catch. juggler. That's a, I should <laughs> start out a new career at that. So Beauty. That'd be a good eater right there. Did it again. I moved down That's about five fight. cases. I moved down. I mean, I took the, I took the Catch spot the fish. Uh, you know, but he has fished with me a lot, so I don't know. Maybe I wore off on I've, I've had a good teacher, that's for sure. Come on, get that from under the boat. Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> yeah. As the boats drive by. There it is. Nice walleye. Oh, Another good eater. We're lucking out today. I know I'd like to show everybody a nice big fish, but we let those go. We got lots of table fare here. So that's a nice little walleye. Gonna be a good eater. More than likely that's a male. Hard to tell on that size. He's got a kind of a fat belly, so but good size to eat. Nice job, Mike. Thank you. Woohoo! Might be oh, one we're yeah. gonna let go, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, like I said earlier, they get they magnify and then they then they change. You want me to grab the net for yeah, you? Yeah, we might net that one. Oh yeah, he's a 20 incher. Not not a massive fish, but it's a pretty good one. Cool. So that looks like a pretty good size hen. And it's still going to be, I bet you this one's like 21 and a half inches. It's, it's right at that, that borderline under 22 because right here in Rufus Woods, we have limits. Uh, there's no, there is no ladder that leaves this stretch of water. So we have limits. They're not worried about smolt production and, and things like that. So uh, here on the reservoir, we do eight fish per person is the statewide limit and uh, one over 22. So if I keep one over 22, it's it's got to be under 24, definitely under 24. I'm usually getting them in that 22 and a half to 23 and a half range just because um, most of the time the males are the ones that are smaller than that and the females are the ones that are bigger than that. So we're definitely trying to release some females. Let's get a measurement on this one and we can see what it is. <laughs> 21 and a half inches. That's a good fish. That's a great fish um, and it's gonna make for a great table fare. We get them much bigger than that, let them go. But this is more like what you're looking for. You're gonna get a lot of meat off of this fish. What, you, is that too heavy for you, Austin? I'm hitting anchor mode because we just uh, I just missed one, he missed one, and then I hooked one. So we're going to sit right here for a minute. <laughs> it feels like a good fish. Yeah, you might want to get on the other side over there. 
I don't know. It could be a good one. It might just be another one of them nice eater sized fish. They generally start to get a little heavier about this point. It must be something when you're dealing with a lot of current. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a ton today, but it, it, uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the fish. It really does. So I try not to horse them. While I got a little paper thin spot in their mouth that they can pull out pretty easily. That's right. Come out of there. Pretty big head shakes. This could be a better fish. It's a nice one. Oh, you want a net? That's a good fish. Yeah. Oh, it's a nice one. Boy, he swallowed it. Oh, he swallowed it from that jig all the way down the road. Oh, it just come up. Oh, I was just dang. going to go grab the net. Well, I know, while the jig was all the way down his throat, I, I wouldn't have thought he would have come off. That was a nice fish. That was about a 27 inch walleye. That was a good one. You would have uh, released that one anyway. Yeah, it we were going nice to go, get it, uh, good picture of it. It would have been nice, yep. Nice we fish. We could have showed that off to you guys. Darn. Okay. Good hook, Austin. That was fun. Let's get another one. What you got there, Joe? Well, this one just decided to come up and take a nibble. A little taste. <laughs> I think well, he found one of the hooks. Well, I think uh, I'll net this one. How's that? <laughs> Good plan, Austin. Good plan. I promised some groceries back at home, so. <laughs> sometimes, noise? sometimes I suppose it's catch and release, but not today with these beautiful walleye. <laughs> Also known as Columbia River Gold. Yeah, that's a good meter there. Mm -hmm. Did it again. Don't let them get you. Nice fish. Good job. That's why I brought ringers today. Look out. Put some fish in the boat. <laughs> good job, guys. <laughs> so I, I'm looking for eaters today. <laughs> Selective fishery. I'm going to go ahead and get the net out. <laughs> this one has a little bit more to it than my last one. Well, it doesn't matter what Mike side of the boat you're on, Joe. Mike, you trying to knock my fish off? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to hook it this well. gone straight down yet and they're usually the big ones start to go straight down but somewhere about now. Oh look at that head shake. I think I'm actually wrapped around. Take two on the big fish. <laughs> we might be able to show this one to you guys. One sec then. Nice fish. Seeing color? Yeah, he's in the cheek. Yeah. Still a nice fish. And he's got Mike's line. That's Actually, nice. that's a good fish. Yeah. Make, make sure, make sure whose hook, hook is in there. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That might, yeah. that might be my hook in there. I don't think so. <laughs> that's funny. We can, you got one foil, I'll take the other. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna show the, show you guys this. So look at this stinger hook. So I talk a lot about stinger hooks, and that one is the only thing that got that fish. It was right there. This this was kind of laying on the edge in the mouth, but that one's the one that really held them on. So nice fish. Got a little bit of a mess to clean up. That's a good fish. I'll get a measurement on it real quick. is 23 and three quarter inch fish we got 10 nice ones in the box already this is a big female it's not a huge female but uh, I don't think we need to get greedy today we got lots not of meals in that box I think we let this female go absolutely what do you think I think that's the great decision all right 
That's pretty fish. Beautiful. beautiful fish. Nice color. And away she goes. See you later. See you next time. Come again. Awesome. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Nice work. Very nice. Nice hook set. Nice hook set, Nick. This one feels pretty good, but nice. I can hear that drag click a little bit. Make sure that's working. Nick, did you try that strategy of I did. Yeah, I thought I, 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 I was hearing you, you know, and Employed it like, ooh, is that a rock? I think. No, it's. <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. We're gonna like this one. Very nice fish. Yeah, he's right there. I can see him. That's a dandy. Yeah, buddy. Good job. Thank Nick. you, sir. Definitely a big female. We wanted to see one of those today to show everybody. Oh gosh. That's a nice fish. Stinger hook. Stinger again. in the chin. Wow. Yep. That's, That's a, a heavy nice fish. fish. Yep. Look at her tail. Her tail's kind of missing something. It looks like a bass making a bed. <laughs> yeah. Well I uh Battler. That's a 25 inch fish. So she Beauty. Be real careful with her. Yep. We're going to let her go. And, uh, great job. Beauty. Yeah. Great job. Fantastic. That's definitely heck my best walleye this year. That was a heck of a good hook set, too, yeah. man. I like watching you bass guys <laughs> do that. Whoa. Does, it doesn't feel that big, but I guess I'd, you know, rip the heck out of it. Can you yep. snap a picture? Yeah. Man. Okay. All right. 25 inch or going back. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Austin. Nice later. job, Nick. Healthy fish. Way to go. Nice work. Woo. Thanks for letting her go. Awesome. What we got here? There it is. That's, That's a, a good fish. fish. One of those males, those really yellow gold ones. Boy, they're pretty fish, aren't they? They are. They're pretty cool. They got so much more color here than they do in, in like Banks Lake. Another one caught right in the chin. I thought you said it slowed down. Well, I was just in the process <laughs> of saying the bite has slowed and wham, I got bit. So, <laughs> we are still catching some fish, having fun. What a great day. We lucked out on our weather, starting to get a little bit of a breeze. This one feels heavy, maybe. We'll see. We might want to net it. I'm going to try the net this yeah, time. Yeah, let's last do the time. net this time, huh? Yeah, last time the net thing just get it out. I see color. nice to be on this end of the net sometimes too. Generally I'm doing all the netting. <laughs> oh, it's nice 
fish. You know, there's a proper way to handle these big fish. And if you look inside there, you can see the gills. They're a real hardy fish, walleye are, but you don't want to get into those gills. You can see that I'm way above them and I'm real gentle when I'm around there. So even when I switch hands, it's still the same thing. I'm up in the in the crook of the, the deal. I'm not inside the red. She's not bleeding. And uh, when I can, I'll take that hand out and I kind of hold her by her belly. She's going to cooperate for a minute. She hasn't wiggled on me yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fish. This Gorgeous one's got a little fish. mark on it too. They must be down there fighting with each other or something. A lot of fish I've been getting the last few days have had some marks in their tails and different things like that. But yeah. What a nice fish. That's a little female. Let's see what she measures. 23 and a half inches. Nice. We got a pile of fish in the box. I think we got 11 in there. She's 23 inches. I think I'm going to let her go. Especially since it was my fish. I'll let it go. I'm not <laughs> Ah, it sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Nice job. Nice. I thought we were going to have another double there, Austin. <laughs> hey, we got another one on, don't we? <laughs> yep, missed mine. I don't even know if it was a fish, but I get kind of jerk happy when we're out here, you know. I feel anything weird, man. I set the hook. <laughs> There's color. Nice little male. That's what we're looking for. Perfect. That's going to be great. So we have the fishing magician on the pole this time. Oh, there must be a lot of current here. <laughs> feels really heavy. My last time, I think I got the smallest fish, which is pretty difficult. Is it a beast? Well, <laughs> we're hoping not this time. <laughs> there he is. That's a nice fish. Yeah, it is. Again, what a great day here on the Upper Columbia for walleye. I mean, this is a spectacular fishery. The quality of the fish is really outstanding. I think that's one of the things that people would really appreciate about fishing in this particular area. I also appreciate the fact, well, you know, there is a learning curve for people that aren't used to fishing these jigs. Yeah. But I've seen you take a guy that can barely cast, and by the end of the day, He's catching fish, and it's a matter of touch and just getting used to bouncing these jigs across the bottom. And it's, as you've proven, it's highly effective way to get to the bottom. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it takes a little bit to get people to kind of get the feel of it. You know, and a lot of times we'll get about halfway through our day, and people will be like, once they start catching them themselves, they're like, 
oh, I've been missing fish all day. Exactly. You know, once they get the feel for it, then then they do really well. And I get repeat customers that come back and, and they just kick butt the next time they come. So it's a lot of fun. Well, it is, and it's a hands-on experience. You know, they get to hook the fish. And that, again, is it's very satisfying in a challenging fishery. It makes yeah. them feel really good catching these walleye. And I appreciate the fact today that we return probably a third or more of our catch to the river. Yep. And those were all large fish, over 22 inches. Uh, many were females that are going to be spawning. Right. And so this is going to be a vital fishery for a long time. Yep. And I really appreciate this getting out. It's just a wonderful day again. And I have to uh, also comment on your ability to manage the boat. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of rods going, you're fishing, and there's the wind is changing, the current's changing, and you do a really masterful job of keeping the boat in position so we're able to fish effectively. Really good job with that. Yeah. Now you're just kind of winding down. You've been up here most of winter trying trading between Lake Roosevelt Kokanee, which yeah. is one of your specialties, and then also the triploid rainbow off the net pen. Yep. and then the walleye, but soon you're going to be transitioning to some other walleye fisheries. Yeah, yeah. We're going to start, uh, you know, generally uh, on a normal year, I start down at Moses around the first week in May. Uh, we finish up up here, like like you said, I've, I've been up here five months already, so it, it, I'm ready to kind of start moving on and, and going into that next fishery, which is Moses Lake, and we're predominantly fishing crankbaits down there with side planers, and it's, it's a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's an explosive bite when you get them, and it, it's just pretty neat. And, and there's also a great smallmouth fishery that we've been starting to do some combo trips with smallmouth bass and walleye in the morning and, and kind of working in the afternoon for the smallmouth. And boy, it, it's a lot of fun. And, and I'm looking forward to getting down there and getting home and, and yeah. moving on to the next fishery. So. Exactly. And then after that, you are July 1st, here yeah. come the king salmon. And so you'll be uh, fishing for king and hopefully sockeye again this year. We'll get yep. a good return. Yep. And then your next phase is buoy tan. Yep. We'll be down there at the coast, you know, and, and we always love the coast. That's a great fishery. That's the one that books up first for us. We get people that get off the boat and rebook. So, yeah. you know, we get crabbing and bottom fishing sometimes, and we got salmon and king salmon and coho. So it's a dynamic fishery with a lot of opportunity. And, and boy, I tell you what, Oregon coast in August is just awesome. Well, you, you fish a full year, you're a very active guide, and you've got some very specialized fishery that you can offer your clients. And uh, especially on the new platform you've got here, 